Tonight I am going to discuss something which is very common, but we do not take seriously how important it is the way how Buddha has introduced Buddhist way of life from the beginning up to the end of salvation, nirvana. So, the Buddha has renounced, gave up all his property and kingdoms and families and incomes and everything renounced, not for his own benefit of freedom, for gaining enlightenment to guide others. Because he knew by dealing with worldly material things or worldly pleasure, he won't be able to gain that supreme wisdom or enlightenment. Must have free mind. By leading a worldly life, no one can maintain free mind lot of commitment and responsibilities and obligations and duties and create so many uh, evil thoughts in the mind. Jealousy, grudge, ill will, misunderstanding, disagreement. No one can lead a worldly life without facing these problems. Uh, that is why he decided to renounce everything to have free mind, uh, then easy to develop. After gaining his enlightenment, he introduced this Buddhist way of life very systematically, practically. He did not advise people to renounce everything and start the Buddhist way of life. While staying at home, by fulfilling their duties, responsibilities and obligations, while experiencing worldly sensual pleasure, working, earning, accumulating, item by item systematically, he has introduced. Until you get the proper understanding of holding responsibilities of worldly material things, worldly life, sensual life. Uh, when that experience, understanding appears in the mind, uh, then you can renounce. It is practical. But many of those who have renounced for the namesake in their mind, renunciation is not there. It must come through understanding, experience. Now there are some Jataka stories, previous birth stories of the Buddha. On many times he was a ruler the king of the country. After ruling the country for a certain period, he realized this is a very big burden, lot of responsibilities, fear, worries, anger, insecurity. So these things always disturb the mind. So what is the use of maintaining all these things, why not I have free mind? Ah, then hand over the kingdom to his son or brothers or somebody, he goes in. After that, on many occasions he has recited, Aho Sukham, Aho Sukham. What a wonderful happiness I am experiencing now. When I was a ruler, 
I had lot of worries and fears and suspicions and insecurity. Now my mind is free from all these things. So I am experiencing real happiness without craving, without attachment. I hear in this particular discourse. You recite this. Simply by reciting, you expect some sort of blessing. Certain sutras, we recite to bless you. Yes, you get the blessing. If you develop devotion, confidence in your mind, you get the blessing. But that blessing is just like Taking two Panadol when you have a headache. After a few hours, you get back a headache. Uh, that is the nature of this kind of blessing. Just to calm your mind, to reduce fear from your mind, and develop some sort of confidence in your mind. So blessing is very important. But the main purpose of these discourses or the sutras, the Buddha did not uh, introduce for us to recite, just to recite, without doing anything, just recite. It is like this, when you are sick, you go to a sensei and he give a big prescription, the names of so many medicines. You come back and go on reciting the names of all these medicines, thinking you can get cured your sicknesses without buying medicine, without taking medicine. You just recite, recite every day names of the medicine. So recital of the sutras also appears like that. These are for something for us to do something, not only recite, to do or not to do. Uh, here, the name of this sutra is very famous, everybody knows. But the deep aspect of this sutra, people have not realized. Here we can understand how the Buddha has started Buddhist way of life at home, then went on developing and developing and developing and developing, ended at Nirvana. Not running away at once. This is Mangala Sutra. Mangal means blessing, auspicious. So somebody came and asked this question. People have different opinions of blessings. Can you please tell us what are the real blessings? Ah, then the Buddha started this Mangala Sutra. Ah, these are the blessings. So these blessings are not for you to recite, but to practice. Then you get the blessing, real blessing. So he started. Asevana cha bhalana panditana cha sevana. Puja cha puja niyana etam mangalam uttama. Ah, this is the highest blessing. Etam mangalam uttama means highest. Three items are there. There are three things that we have to practice. Definitely we get some sort of blessings. But in the first item, Asevanaja Bhagavan, not to associate with wicked, cruel, selfish people who have low mentality, if not who have bad habit, character, behavior, they can influence you. Therefore, you get into trouble. 
you cannot correct them, adjust them, stop their bad deeds. Therefore, your duty is to keep away from them. If you can do that, it is a blessing. Because they cannot spoil your mind. Their habit, their nature, their character, their behavior, their attitude can irritate you, disturb you, or certain thing you like to follow them, then you get spoiled your whole life. Therefore, it is a blessing. In another place, Buddha has mentioned, it's called Khagga Vishan Sutta. Noche Ladeta Nitrakam Sahayam Sadhin Charam Sadhu Vihari Dira. Abhibhuya Sabbani Parishayani Eko Chare Khagga Vishan. If you cannot find out, a suitable person for you to associate as your friend if it is difficult. It is better for you to live alone without creating any discrimination or ill will. People are not reliable. They can pretend. This is the nature of the human mind. So if you cannot trust them, better to keep away from them. If you associate with them, you may get into trouble or they may take advantage of you. Therefore, better to live alone, peaceful, similar to this. Now then the next item. Panditanancha Sevana. Pandita, the word, People use for learned people. It is a title. Like then, then they call Pandita, learned. Here the real meaning is wise. The word Pandita they use for educated people who have worldly knowledge, book knowledge, academic knowledge, or they are also pandit. But many of them are not wise people. Knowledge is there, but they are not wise. Why they are not wise? They have certain human weaknesses in them. Although they have knowledge, wonderful knowledge. Knowledge is one thing, understanding is another. If understanding is there, then we know how to talk, how to act, how to behave without harming, disturbing, without creating misunderstanding, enmity. Therefore, associate with wise people so that there are many things that you can learn from them. They also can teach you many things. They can point out to your weaknesses. That is the most important. They can adjust your character, your behavior, guide you. So if we associate with such people, the Buddha says it is a blessing. Yes, a real blessing throughout the whole life, not only for a certain period. Third one. Puja cha puja niyana. This is a very unique Buddhist attitude which you cannot find in any other religion. Respect those who are worthy of respect. Irrespective of their religion or race or color, Others cannot do that. They do not encourage their followers to respect others. Only their teachers. Some of them say it is a sin 
if we worship or respect another religious being. Here, what the Buddha says. Respect those who are worthy of respect. Whatever religion they have, it is immaterial. That is a label. But you can see some of them are very virtuous. They have kindness, compassion, honesty, knowledge, understanding, patience, tolerance, respect them. Whether they are Christians or Muslims or Hindus or free thinkers, you have to appreciate only their good characteristics, good attitudes, not the religious label. Other religion is cannot say this. So if we can do that, it is a blessing. Because when they come to know that we respect them also. Now, in my publications, in my public talk, always I mention, Jesus says like this, Muhammad says like this, Krishna says like this. But when they talk about their religion, they never say, Buddha says like this. No. When I write in all my publications, you can see certain important advice given by Jesus, the Mohammed and Krishna. Uh, that they call respect those who are worthy of respect. It is a blessing people appreciate. Uh, see, three important items. They are very useful, very meaningful for us to adjust our way of life. Then the next one. Patirupa desa vasocha pubbecha kata punyata atta samma panidhicha etan mangalama. Patirupa desa vasocha pubbecha kata punyata. Those who have done some meritorious deeds or good karma during their previous birth, they get the chance to be born in certain countries where they can carry on their life without facing so many calamities, troubles and violence and discrimination and disturbances in your natural disasters. Because we have done some good things. This is a beautiful saying. Now let us take here in Malaysia. Compare with many other countries in many other parts of the world. Look at the television programs. What is happening in many other countries. Look at the people who are living in Africa. Then millions are dying without food. No clothing, no shelter. And how fortunate we are. Again, certain countries, once a year, at least earthquake, volcanic eruption, flood, or fire, or epidemic, serious sicknesses. How many millions are suffering and dying? Fire in Australia, and recently in America also. Few thousand acres completely burned. How many houses? How many people? Again, floods, especially this year. Every country, Japan, China, and India, Nepal, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Millions of people lost their houses, their belongings, and died. Bangladesh, 75% of the island flooded, washed away all their belongings. We have not, we never experienced, therefore we cannot understand how they suffer. Again, 
when they declare war, Afghanistan, when they declare war, is during the winter. Six million people had to run away as refugees by carrying their babies, do not know where to go, where to stay, what to eat, nothing. Six million human beings. We cannot imagine. See what is happening in Iraq. They are divided into three groups as enemies. Zia, Sunni, Muslim and Saddam Hussein. Three groups. Attack and kill and burn and bombing, destroying, going on. So, we are actually very fortunate. Even different religions, different races, but we are living as human beings without disturbing others, without harming others. We do our work. How peaceful, how fortunate we are. But in many other countries, they cannot do that. Now, that is why here the Buddha says, Patirupa desa vaso Now, if we have done some meritorious deed within this lifetime, helping, supporting, assisting others, and uh, every possible way, do some service to others, uh, they are meritorious. After our death, when existence or rebirth take place, definitely it will be a fortunate state. Because of the merit, so the good karma that we have, guide, direct, for us to be born in certain countries. It is a blessing. It's a real blessing. If we know how to uh, maintain our dignity, our principles, and by following certain discipline as real human beings, by maintaining human qualities, human values, human dignity, human intelligence, we have all these things. But how many people maintain these things? They abuse, misuse their human life, there is no human values in them and no human dignity and they disgrace the human life. Ah, here the Buddha says, if you can maintain our human dignity, human values, humane qualities such as kindness, compassion, honesty, patience, tolerance, understanding, they are humane qualities. Human values, by fulfilling our duties, responsibilities, obligations towards others, our family members, our relatives, our friends, our country, uh, then we are leading a real human life. It will become a blessing. Atta Samma Panidhi. Next one. Bahu satyancha sipancha vinayocha susikhito subhasita chaya vacha etan mangal muttam. Bahu satyancha sipancha. If you can learn, there are many things for us to learn to develop our understanding, to gain some income, maintain our life. We have to learn something in languages, 
philosophy, psychology, science and so many other work for us to do. We gain some sort of income. See how Buddha has encouraged us to learn, not only Buddhism, no meditation. Learn something with a man or woman, that is something for them to learn, to gain something, gain some income without depending on others. It is a blessing. Vinayavacha Susikita. And we observe certain precepts, principles as our qualities. By knowing these things are wrong, wicked, harmful, immoral, then we try not to do it. Now that is precept or discipline. Not because of fear of God, not because of hell, not because of punishment, but by knowing. These things are wrong, harmful, wicked, immoral. Then we try not to do. It is a blessing. We maintain our dignity. We maintain respectable life without harming, disturbing others. Subhasita vaja. If we know how to talk in gentle way, many people make mistakes by talking without considering what they talk, to whom that they talk. We have to consider this very carefully. One word is enough to create violence or bloodshed or declare war. One word is enough. It's so dangerous. Therefore, when we talk to others, we have to guard our tongue. We must know what to talk and what not to talk. We must know to whom we are talking. Considering, now when we talk to children, when we talk to women, there must be some sort of discipline in our words. Certain things we should not talk in front of them, regarded as very vulgar. We have to avoid it. Again, parents should not do certain things, should not talk something in front of their children. Children eat or learn things. Now, in the modern society, father, the son and wife and daughter jointly sit down and drink and smoke a uh, modern society. But those days, father never drink at home in front of their children. If they want to drink, they go out, slowly come back, and family members do not know whether he has taken drink. Knowing that it is bad, he does not want to do in front of others in the same manner. When we talk, it's a very important thing to guard our tongue. In the teachings of the Buddha also it is mentioned in another place. Is it advisable for us to tell everything what we know? No, not advisable. Because certain things may harm others, disturb others, create misunderstanding or anger. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, Hindu, just like Dhammapada to Hindus, in Sanskrit language, Satyat Bhruyam, Priyat Bhruyam, Nam Bhruyam, Satyam Priya. Tell the truth. But if you are truth that you are going to tell, is harmful, create misunderstanding, anger, disturbances, better not to talk. Hinduism. 
You can argue, yes, I know it is true. No, that is not true. That can create a lot of problems. Enmity. Therefore, when we talk, always we have to think to whom we are talking. And certain words, certain terms that we use to talk to others, children, women, or kings, or the ministers, or the rulers, or religious people, different terms, different words, very polite way, art of talking. So if we learn this, how to talk gently, without harming, disturbing others, it is a blessing, because nobody to remark, to say what you have said is bad or harmful. In another discourse, Buddha says, Dhamme nava kami chikatan, arye nava sunhi bhavena. If you want to talk, talk something which is meaningful, useful, if you haven't got such thing to talk, Ariyenava Tunni Bhavena. Observe noble silence. Some people when they get together, they must talk. So we talk too much. Because of that we invite lot of trouble. Misunderstanding, jealousy, anger. Violence, disturbances, so and so say like this, so and so say like this. So, try to observe silence as much as possible. When it is very important to tell something, ah, then talk. Ah, that is why here. Subhasita jaya vacha. Gentle way of talking. Polite way of talking. It is a blessing. Everybody respect. When you talk politely to anybody, even animals, dogs also, they come near us. When you talk gently, etang mangala muttama. If you can practice these three, the Buddha says, they are blessings. You maintain your dignity, you maintain your human values, you maintain your human your principles, your precepts, then Mata Pitu Patanam Putta Dharatta Sangaho Anakula Chakamanta Etamam Vermatta Mata Pita Mother and the Father. Whether they are good or bad, that is not the important point. As children, it is their duty, fulfill certain duties towards their mother and their father. Especially when they are sick, when they are old, when they are in difficulty, it is your duty not to forget, not to neglect them. If you can do something to release their sufferings, the Buddha say it is a blessing. Do you know the Buddha's father, King Suddhoda, he died and the Buddha was holding his head. He has renounced everything, but duties are there. Now as monks, we have not renounced everything, our family, our parents. A monk wanted to disrobe and go home. The Buddha asked, why? Because my parents are very poor. Nobody to support me. Then the Buddha said, why do you want to destroy? You can support them as a monk. You can feed them, you can bathe them. 
go out and collect some food, then bathe and feed them. As monks, certain duties we have to fulfill towards ourselves. Have you heard the Buddha? When he was, the Buddha was holding him. He is one of the lay people without becoming monk who have attained Arahanta, Buddha's path. Before his death, he attained Arahanta. Only twelve people attain Arahantahood without becoming monk as lay people. The Buddha's father is one of them. Now therefore, every religion, Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, that is highly appreciated. If we can fulfill our duties towards our parents. I think you can remember I have told you, Prophet Muhammad, when he was asked, you always talk about heaven. Can you tell me actually where this heaven is? Muhammad said, heaven is at the feet of your mother. That means one who attends to his or her mother, definitely will be in heaven. Hinduism also. Matu Devo Bhava, Pitru Devo Bhava. Regards your father and mother as Devas. Hinduism. The Buddha. Brahmati Mata Pitaro. Brahma, the God. Regards your father and mother as God. Christianity in the Bible also says. Honor thy father, honor thy mother. Ah, here the Buddha says, Mata Vitu Patha. If you can do that, it is a blessing for you. Not only duty, it is a blessing. Putta Dharasa Sangha. You must know how to look after your wife, your children. Giving this advice to men. You cannot neglect your wife. You cannot discriminate your wife and your children. You have a lot of duties to fulfill towards them. It is Sigalovada Sutta the Buddha has mentioned. What are the duties to the husband? What are the duties to the wife? What are the duties to the children? What are the duties of the parents in Sigalova Item by item. So if we can fulfill. Because this is the, the real way of human life. Not like other living beings. As human beings, these duties, obligations must be there. Now, human values we can find in them. Then we fulfill these duties. Anakulachakamanta. You want to do some business, some work to earn. Yes. Earlier he has advised. You must do something. That must be anakula. Harmless job. By torturing, by killing, by stealing, by bluffing and cheating, you can earn a lot. But that is not the real way. If we can maintain your life by doing something that which you never harm another person, never bluff another person, it is a blessing. See how step by step going on developing and developing and developing. Dhananja Dhammacharya. Jnata kanancha sangao, anavajjani kammani, etan mangal mudda. Dana. Dana means giving something with devotion and confidence and understanding. Uh, that's called dana. 
the real meaning, literary meaning is giving. But when you come to religion, this word, but today we use only for giving food, dana, is not only food. Whatever we offer, it is dana. So, we have to do that. Why? We cannot give anything, donate anything, if we have too much uh, selfishness or greed. By keeping selfishness and greed in our mind, we cannot go very peacefully. There will be a lot of disturbances. And people never respect, never support. When they come to know you are like this, you are so stingy, you are so selfish. To reduce this selfishness and greed, you must give something, donate something for the well-being of others. Again, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad has said, whatever you have given to others, you can claim as your property. But not the property left here, up here, when you depart from this world. Whatever you have given to others, it is you, belong to you. Claim as my property, but not the rest. Buddha. Punyani paralo kasmin patitha vantiparina. When you depart from this world, there is nobody to support you, help you, assist you. Neither God, nor the Buddha, nobody else. Only your good karma that you have done within this lifetime welcome you, support you, help you. So if you have given for the well-being of others, again, uh, that is belong to you, remain as your property. So when you come into existence again, what you have given to others, the merit that you gain, support you there. It is a blessing. Balance. Dhammacharya, that has nothing to do with dhana, the dhamma. Dhammacharya, one word, one English word is righteous way of life. One word. You can understand. Dhammacharya, righteous way of life means without doing harmful, shameful, immoral, wicked things. Lead the life very respectable way. Uh, that is Dhammacharya. Righteous way of life. So if we can lead that way of life, it is a blessing. Dhananca Dhamma Jariya. Nyata Kanancha Sangha. See, the Buddha has not forgotten to tell you not to forget your relatives. You have to develop your communication, relationship with your relatives. Occasionally, you have to visit them, have to invite them, and when they are in trouble, go and do something for them. When you are in trouble, they may come and help you, support you, because of your blood relationship. Don't neglect them. See how good I have explained item by item for us to go ahead by fulfilling our duties. So we have to maintain our relationship, blood relationship as our relatives. Dhananja Dhamma Chariyata Jnata Kananja Sangha Anavajjani Kammani Whenever you do certain things, you have to think very carefully. Whether people criticize, condemn you for doing this, whether it is shameful, whether we should do or not as human beings to maintain our human dignity, 
whether this is harmful for the others. In Kalam Sutra, the Buddha said, whenever you do certain thing, you will be benefited, but others will be affected. Whenever you do certain thing, others will be benefited, you will be affected. Don't do that. Whatever you do, if you will be benefited and others also benefited, ah, then do. So you cannot do anything only for the well-being of others by neglecting you. You have to think of you also. That is not selfishness. Maintain your dignity. Anuvajjani kamma. Etang mangala mustana. This is the highest blessing. How nice if we can maintain these qualities. No need to go and ask to bless. <laughs> Not necessary to go and ask to bless you. You get the blessing according to your way of life. Arati virati papa majya pana cha dhamyam appa madho cha dhammesu etan mangala muttam Arati to cease virati abstain two things some people are doing certain immoral or harmful or shameful thing. By knowing these things are wrong, you should not go and join with them. Because you know these things are wrong. Abstain, virati. Go away. Don't look at them. They are not going to listen to you. Then go away, abstain, without joining, without encouraging them to do. There are many things happening. You know they are wrong, they are shameful, they are immoral, they are wicked. So when you come to know, your duty is to abstain, keep away from them. Even simple things like drinking and smoking. You are not used to drink or a smoke. So if you go and join with them, they know how to influence you. Take a little bit, no harm, and this, only today, and you like this. Then slowly, 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 you go on developing, developing, and smoking also like this. If you keep away from both, ah, you are safe. It is a blessing. Arati virati papa. Madhyapanacha Sanyam, or directly he, the Buddha mentioned. Liquor, drugs, Madhyapan, which creates infatuation. That means we lose our common sense, sense of reasoning, shame, fear, disappear from the mind, through the influence of this. We do know what we are doing, no shame, no fear. Ah, that is the danger. Therefore, how many families are completely ruined because of this drinks and drugs. Then, addicted to it, they try to do that by doing any wicked thing. There's a saying, first, Man take the bottle. After that, bottle will take another bottle. That bottle that you took, take another bottle. After taking these two bottles, the bottle take the man. Ah, that is danger. Bottle take the man means in future, man behave according to this bottle. No shame, no fear. Nothing. Therefore, drinking itself does not create bad karma. That is the beauty in Buddhism. Liberal. But 
you can create all the other wicked, cruel, bad karma because of this. After taking that, that is why it is dangerous. Whether it creates bad karma or not, if you can avoid, keep away from this, you can maintain. Otherwise, through the influence of this, you can commit any kind of bad karma. Now, as medicine, the Buddhists have no problem to take. No need to go to that extreme, according to the Buddha. You should not think that I want to take liquor. Ah, then it is wrong. You know liquor is there, alcohol is there in your medicine, in your drug. No harm. That is a medicine. Anavajyanakam. Appamado chadhammesu. Appamad. Pamad, Appamad. Pamad means postpone, postpone, postpone. Appamad means without neglecting, do itself immediately. Appamad. You must be active. You should not be lazy. Advice. Another discourse. Alaso gihi kam bhogi nasad. There are four beautiful sayings here. Those who want to lead a worldly life, sensual life, they should not be lazy. They must be active. Then they can enjoy their life. Who says this? The Buddha. If you want to lead the worldly sensual pleasure, you must be active. But you should not do bad thing, immoral thing, wicked thing. Ah, that's that right here. How we encourage. Here these sayings also say. Appamada, you must be active. Don't post one, never mind. We can do this later. Sayings in proper moments. When you are going to do some business, you have to think you won't die so soon. That means for you to create confidence. Go ahead with your business. Otherwise you may think, why should I take so much of your I may die within few years time. No. You have to think, no, I won't die. For oh, that. Again they say, when the time comes for you to pray, you have to think, I may die today or tomorrow, therefore I must go and pray. So when you come to religion, uh, we should not postpone. Not a similarity, people do not know all these things. We condemn other religions. Garocha nivatocha Santutti cha katanyata, kalena dhamma savana, etang mangala muttama. Reverence and humility. Reverence means respect. Puja ko labhate pujan, vanda po pati vanda. In another place. Those who respect others will be respected by others. If you do not respect others, others do not respect you. Now that is the meaning here. Reverence. You must know how to respect others, then others respect you. Otherwise, then nobody respects you. Humility. Simple humble life. The more you become humble, simple, people respect you. If you try to show off, nobody, they pass remarks with you. Then people appreciate, such a great man, such a rich man, such an educated man, so humble, so simple, they respect. Ah, here, to the same. 
Gratitude. That is the first lesson the Buddha has shown us. After gaining enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, he got up, stood in front of the tree, paying respect for giving him shelter for gaining enlightenment, gratitude. He has shown gratitude towards his plant life for giving shelter for him. Therefore, gratitude is very highly appreciated virtues in Buddhism. We must be grateful to others if others have done something for us. So if we are if we maintain this good quality, then others appreciate that. It is a blessing. Santutti is the most important word, Santutti. Santutti Paramam Dhana. Another place the Buddha says. Contentment is the highest wealth. Santutti Paramam, highest, Dhanan, wealth. What is contentment? People are greedy. They work and work and earn and day and night and dump and dump and dump. No content. By bluffing, cheating, disturbing also they collect. Contentment means this is enough for me. This is enough for my family. If you can maintain this contentment, jealousy never appears in your mind because you are content. If there is no jealousy, anger also never appears in your mind. If there is no anger, violence also never appears. You can escape so many evil deeds if you can maintain contentment. Enough for me. But people cannot satisfy. They are collecting, 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 collecting throughout their life. They collect. No contentment. Then what will happen? They say we are collecting for our children. Other living beings never do that. They train their young ones, birds, animals, others, to train them how to find out their food, how to fly, how to walk. So many things they train and after that release them. Never expect anything from them. Leave them alone. That is their way of life, animals' way of life. But we accumulate a lot of wealth for our children. After our death, they got very big property very easily. They do not know how to value this because they did not work. They waste. There are many families I know, multi-millionaire families. Their children have destroyed all their property because no value to them. Therefore, allow them also to work and earn. Don't spoil them by collecting so much property. Ah, that is why it is. You must have content. Otherwise, no peace in your mind. Jealousy always appears in your mind for nothing. You can avoid all these things. Enough. Enough for me. What else? Santutthita Patanyata, they told us. Kalena Dhamma Savana. Uh, this is also important. Why Buddha has said like this? Listening to the Dhamma at proper time. Not always. Because our minds are influenced with so many others. Irritable feeling, 
disturbances, worries, fear. Although we pay attention to a Dhamma, it never gets into our mind. But the mind is polluted. Uh, that's why, very careful to Buddha say, you must listen to the Dhamma when your minds are free from those disturbances. Otherwise they never absorb into the mind. Just listen, never change the mental attitude, wasting your time. You must have peace in your mind. Then can concentrate, can listen, pay attention, can learn. Otherwise, just listen, nothing. Kale in a Kanti ke so vachasvata, samananan ke dasana, kale in a dhammata kacha, etan mangalimuttama. Kanti, in Hinduism they always use this word, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. They recite through meditation also. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti means peace, 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 peace. Om Shanti. They are praying to God. Shanti, Shanti, asking God to send the peace to this world. So, by praying to God, praying to anybody, we cannot get Shanti. We cannot get peace. Others cannot give peace. It depends how you take things into your mind. If you take anything seriously into your mind, no shanti, no peace. Therefore we have to train our mind not to take anything so seriously. And then we can maintain some sort of peace. If there is peace in our mind, it is a blessing. Everybody is worrying and grumbling and shouting and quarreling and fighting because there is no peace in their mind. If we know how to maintain peace in our mind, then the organs of the body also get the chance to work in person. Five senses bring all sorts of rubbish into the mind. Mind creates all sorts of things, then no peace, no harmony. So you must know how to handle this, maintain peace. Don't go and pray and worship asking peace. Others cannot give peace. Come to each other. Obedience. Don't think you are elders. You are adult, you are educated people, why should we obey? There are many places where we have to observe the obedience. Various places and certain occasions, we had to practice obedience. Otherwise, that can create a lot of problems if there is no obedience. Regarded as a blessing if you have obedience. Samananancha dasana. Now this is, if you get the chance to meet a monk, Samana means monk. If we meet a monk on the way or anywhere, it is a blessing, but this is in China and Sri Lanka. If they meet a monk on the way, when they are going to do some good work, they get fed up. Because of this both are hate fellow, I disappoint them. This belief is very strong in China and Sri Lanka also. There was a hunter. Every day he goes for hunting animals. One day when he was going, on the way he met a monk. He was very unhappy. All day he spent in the jungle, 
could not touch even nothing. With empty hand he come back. When he was coming on the way, he met this monk again. He was so angry, started to beat this monk. To escape from beating, there was a tree, the monk climbed the tree. He had a stick. When he was beating with the stick, the rope dropped. Hunting dog was behind. When the rope dropped on the head of this man who was beating the monk, the dog thought the monk dropped. He started to bite the monk because the covered with the rope. See, the smell is there, the monk. <laughs> It is a blessing because monk is a harmless person, honest, kind, compassionate, always try to do service to others, but not to harm others. So when we regard all these qualities, you gain, oh, this is a very fortunate man. If you meet a real monk, it is a blessing.